Ahoy mateys! I know I always ask you guys what type of videos and tutorials you'd like me to make and one that was suggested after I posted the 5 basic PvP tips video was for me to do a more general tips and tricks guide for Sea of Thieves. So here are 10 tips that you can use on the seas to help you become a better pirate. Number 1 Always put down a voyage for miles. If you look in your commendations for the Gold Hoarders, Order of Souls, Merchants and Athena's Fortune, you will see that they all have a similar commendation which requires you to sail 1000 nautical miles on voyages for each faction. So all in all, you're going to have to sail 4000 nautical miles and to be honest, it's a bit of a grind. So what I suggest is that at the start of your session, whilst you're looting the outpost, go buy some random voyages and whack one straight down on the table. Then just go about your sailing as normal. Don't even think about the quest, you can just forget that it's even there and before long you will be racking up those nautical miles. It's good to have a surplus of voyages to put down just in case you ever forget to buy one but you want to live by the rule that if your ship is moving those are potential nautical miles that you could be getting. Number 2. Navigating in the storm As most of you know sailing through the storm can be a pain for a number of reasons but the biggest hindrance is the fact that storms mess with your compass, making it difficult to know which direction you are travelling in. This can be a massive disadvantage if you're trying to outrun enemies or quickly reach a destination. On Sea of Thieves you have a compass in your inventory that you carry at all times, but you also have a compass attached to your ship just by the helm. The storm can only affect one of these two compasses at a time, so if you ever need to know which direction you're travelling in in the middle of a storm, just take out your pirate compass and stand next to the ship compass and whichever one isn't spinning like crazy will be displaying the correct direction that you are travelling in. Number 3. Check those emissary tables. I get asked a lot about why I decide to either stay on a server or continue server hopping and this is all due to emissaries. When you raise your emissary flag this will put a tiny little wooden boat on the respective faction that you've chosen to represent. So when you log in, go and check the emissary table for Athena, Gold Hoarders, Order of Souls, Merchant and Reapers. If you see a lot of wooden boats, then you know that the server is quite populated and there's a higher chance of ships carrying good loot. If there aren't any wooden ships, then it's more likely to be a quieter server. Also, you want to check your map table for any Reaper ships, and it depends on your style of playing. If you're looking for PvP and Spice, you want to find servers with Reaper ships and a bunch of emissaries. However, if you're looking for a more chilled out PvE kind of sale, then ideally you want to find a server with no reaper ships and fewer emissaries. This is because there's always a chance of PvP players hopping onto your server and if they see a bunch of emissaries, they're more likely to stay, but if you're the only emissary, they're more likely to leave you alone and find a better server. Number 4. Unload your storage crates Something that I notice all the time is that other players will keep their supplies in a storage crate and don't bother to unload the supplies into the correct barrels. Keeping supplies in the storage crate can be useful to save time in emergencies, but there are two massive risks that arise when doing this. Firstly, if you get boarded by an enemy player, they can easily steal the storage crate or drop it off the side of your ship, and if you're not anchored then it's most likely going to be goodbye storage crate and goodbye supplies. Secondly, let's say you get into a battle and the enemy ship manages to sink you. Your fully loaded storage crate is now going to be in the hands of your enemies and say you want to come back and fight them a second time, they now have a massive advantage over you because they're not going to be struggling for supplies, unlike your ship which will have basic supplies. This will make it even harder to succeed after sinking a first time. So what I always do is use the storage crates to stock up from outposts, barrels or shipwrecks but then I always unload them into my boat. That way, if I can't have my supplies, then nobody can. Number 5 is a bit of a random tip that not many people know, but if you have a surplus of firebombs, you can actually head on over to an island, and if you throw the firebomb close to an animal, this will actually kill and cook the animal meat in one go, saving you time chasing, killing and then cooking the meat later. Side note, make sure not to fling the firebomb directly at the animal as this will actually burn the meat. You want to aim just close and nearby to it, just like this. This tip is really helpful if you're running low on cooked meat for regen and it saves a lot of time. Number 6. Your ship's lanterns. 
If you want to be a sneaky pirate and you don't want to be disturbed on the seas, then I would recommend turning off all the lanterns on your ship. If you have them on, you're pretty much a beacon on the seas and this attracts the attention of enemy ships so easily compared with having them turned off. This also applies to the sails that you're using. If you choose to rock cosmetics like the ghost sails or the soul flame set, or pretty much anything that glows in the dark, then this makes you so easy to spot and more likely to attract unwanted attention. However, I would consider the fact that with all of your ship's lanterns off, it becomes really difficult to see at night. So these days, I tend to keep them on, but then again, I do love a good fight on the seas. Number 7. Don't ignore shipwrecks. If you see a massive flock of birds, then this is indicating that there is a shipwreck below the waves. If you have a storage crate and there's a shipwreck close by, then use this as an opportunity to stock up. They often have so many cursed cannonballs and cooked food for regen, alongside the chance of finding rare fish in barrels. So if I see a shipwreck, I always like to stop by for these reasons. Not only this, but shipwrecks are a great way to find loot. Sometimes there's mega kegs, gems and tridents down there, and there's even the chance of finding the new, rare, coral message in a bottle. Number 8. Barrels in the sea. Similar to the previous tip, if there is a small flock of birds, then this means that there are some floating barrels. If you can't stop or you're in a rush, then it's always a good idea to have a teammate jump overboard, just to check them and get a round of supplies. But if you've got time to stop, then raise your sails and use the harpoons to bring them to your ship. Again, there's always the chance of getting rare fish, so it is worthwhile. Another small tip is that if you head towards a world event like Flameheart or a fleet, there's often a bunch of barrels right before you get to the event, and these tend to have way more cannonballs and planks in them than usual. So again, try and use this to your advantage. Number 9. Key Vines I did mention this in my 5 PvP tips video, but I'll go over it again here because this tip doesn't just apply to PvP players. Whether you are under attack by other players, or a skeleton ship, or a megalodon, there is always a chance that you're going to be in a stressful situation where you've got a lot of holes to repair and your health may need replenishing. I would highly suggest that you go into your settings and put a keybind up for your wooden planks and for your food. The last thing you need in a stressful situation is to be messing around getting your item radial up. You want to just click a button and have your emergency food and planks at the ready. But if you're on controller, you can still set two keybinds on your directional pad. Again, just head into your settings and keybinds to do this. If you're on PC, you can even go one step further and start setting keybinds for things like throwables and cannonballs all the way to your fishing rod, and it really helps you to become more efficient at playing the game if you can learn your keybinds off by heart. Number 10. Audio Finally, tip number 10 is about audio. The audio cues in Sea of Thieves are super important, and arguably, sometimes more important than the visual cues when it comes to things like watching for boarders. You need to familiarise yourself with the sounds of people boarding, mermaids popping, and also silent boarding. I'll show you clips of these here. This is a sound of a normal board. This is a silent board. And this is a sound of a mermaid spawning. As you can see, some of these sounds are really easy to miss, so I would recommend keeping your SFX turned up to 100, and turn down the music and shanty volumes to around 20-40%, to 40%, as you don't really need these as much as you need your sound effects. I found that by doing this, it made me more vigilant when dealing with enemy ships boarding me. Anyway, I hope these tips help you guys on the seas. Let me know what your favourite tip was, and if you've got any other tips that you'd like to share in the comments. Thanks for watching and may the wind be in your sails.